Eric Ten Hag has been Manchester United manager now for a few months. It's been a process. It's been working hard in training. There's been good results. There's been bad results. But the game against Everton and how Manchester United are playing at the moment, we're getting towards, we're starting to see really the patterns of play and the build-up that Ten Hag wants this United team to have. More specifically, the use of that 3-1-6 system. What is that? What I'm going to do in this video is try to explain what it is. The fundamentals of it, how it's come from Ajax, how much success he had at Ajax, and what we're starting to see at Manchester United, because we're really starting to see the um, the framework of Ten Hag's style of play at United. It's exciting. So hopefully you enjoy this video, maybe learn a thing or two. Drop a like on it. I do enjoy doing these more sort of detailed research videos. I think you enjoy them too. I want to say a shout out to Dan Sheldon from The Athletic and also to Darnish. Big up to you, Darnish. On uh, Twitter, I've used both of their sort of research as part of this. The big up to YouTube because it helps to sort of visualize and explain. I think it's a little bit difficult to, not, not too difficult to understand, but it's hard to explain without these visuals. Now, Eric Ten Hag, look, he's an extremely good coach. That's what he is known for. And if you look back at Ajax and the success he had at Ajax, it massively revolved around, you can't really see one defender down here, which is a little bit annoying, but you've got three defenders here. You've got one midfielder and you've got a six up front. It's called the 3-1-6 system. And typically, if you look at how Manchester United have been training under Eric Ten Hag, this is the key part of it. How Manchester United have been trying to play. It's not come easy. It's not come, it's not come naturally, but the players slowly, game by game, are getting towards it. And the Everton game was the best example of it. Because if you look at how Manchester United line up when we start a game, we start in a 4-2-3-1 formation. And it's quite straightforward. I say straightforward. It's a little bit complicated, really, as to what happens. Manchester United in possession are a different... This is the, the formation that you see United lining up to start the game with. But in possession, this is how Ten Hag is trying to get this United team to play. Fullbacks play a crucial part in this. You'll see them either going on the outside or... or Fighting further in into that space there. You'll see Luke Shaw going on the outside or, again, inverting and going into that space there. You'll see Bruno going forward as a number 10 and Ronaldo going forward as well. And now, you what you typically see is either Ericsson or Bruno dropping in alongside one of the two centre-backs with the other central midfielder moving forward. That's a lot of arrows. I know that's a lot of arrows, but that is what transforms a 4-2-3-1 formation on paper into a 3-1-6 in possession. Uh, and here we've got a visualisation. Big up to United Arena for doing this visualisation. This is it in action. And this, this Everton game, as I said, is the best example we've got so far of seeing it working in fruition. And what we, a sort of, a little peep, whatever you want to call it, into what the future holds for United and this formation. Look, you've got, um, you've got Martinez there as the deepest line. Defender, let me get rid of these on there. I'm still trying to get used to this new system. I think it works quite well. If you enjoy it, let me know in the comments. Go for some arrows. Look, you've got Martinez here. You've got Lindelof down there. You've got Ericsson, who's dropped over there. Casemiro over here with... Is that Luke Shaw? I think that's Luke Shaw. No, is that Luke Shaw over there? I can't actually read. I can't actually see. But you can see the numbers. The personnel are kind of irrelevant. And that's a big part of this as well. I'll show you that there's real flexibility in the personnel. The positions are always held, but the personnel does change. And as I said, the game against Everton was, was a really good example of how we're using this to our advantage. Manchester United expected goals against here. It's actually the lowest out of any game that we've had in the last, what? One, two, three, four, eight in the Premier League. 0.65 against Everton because we controlled so much of the ball. And look, in terms of passes, we have more passes against Everton than any other team in the last eight games. And only Brighton at home did we have more successful passes ending in the final third. And we lost that game. Jeez. But Everton played a low block against Manchester United. And that really is where is a massive, massive asset of the 3-1-6 system. Because by doing this, what Manchester United do is we create the overloads in these areas over here. By having, whether it's Anthony, look, whether it's Delo cutting inside as an inverted fullback and Anthony holding his width, whether it's Shaw or the other fullback holding the width, by holding that six up front, one, two, three, four, five, six, you create overloads. And this is what is going to be helping Manchester United create space. Look, this example here Diogo Delo is the player who's holding the width 
And therefore, Manchester United have an option. Anthony on the ball here. Everton can't cover all of that space there. Because of that, it means that United have got an outlet if we wanted to use it. And it changes because here, instead of it being that outlet, you've got Diogo Delo on the ball down here. And look at the space. Bruno's running into that space behind there. And it's because he's getting dragged away and it creates extra space. The overloads, it's a very aggressive and attacking way of playing football. And I'll be honest, at some point, it's going to get taken apart by better teams. But it's a front foot style of play. It's, it's not a formation that's designed to win games 1-0. Look, Delo plays the ball over the top there. Bruno gets a chance on the cutback. And here's another example of a different... Remember this chance when Eriksen passed the ball to Bruno here? Runs forward. He becomes the late runner in the box. And Everton don't have enough men to mark all of our players. Eriksen obviously fires his shot over the bar. But it's another example of creating the overloads. And you know what I was saying earlier about how this formation... It's 3-1-6 on paper in terms of possession moving forward. But the personnel, it can vary. This is a perfect example of it. You see Luke Shaw there. And look, Luke Shaw here... Instead of it being Christian Eriksen, who's dropped deeper to become the third man alongside Martinez and Lindelof, it's actually Luke Shaw. And that's a massive bit of tactical versatility that these players are learning. It's, it's, quite, um, it's quite a complicated thing, I imagine, for these players to understand, given how, well, tactically unaware we've been for a long time even if Ralph Randick did want to try and get his system in play. But look, some, it can be Shaw there, and then other times it can be Ericsson there. The players really are starting to understand this system. And as I said, the Everton game is the, is the best example we've got so far of it working. Because a low block for United has been a kryptonite for years. But by having that overload there, you permanently have options. It means you stretch that defence. By doing this, a defence can't simply... If, it, look, if a team wants to just go here and go, you know what, we're just going to stay compact. We're going to try and stay inside this 18-yard box. Fine, they can do that. But by doing that, they are going to leave spaces here and here for Manchester United to exploit. And that's a big reason of why we were able to break down that Everton low block and a big reason why it worked in that game. And also something that we saw in the Everton game that I don't think we've seen enough of yet that we will continue to see more of the better this team gets under Eric Ten Hag is turnovers in the final third. Look, more turnovers against Everton than any other game in the last eight in the Premier League. And here's an example of it. Manchester United squeezing the space there. Three of us closing down in a triangle. We win the ball back. Eriksen gets it on the edge of the area. He turns it over. He gets an opportunity. He, I, think, I think that was just, just fired wide. Turnovers can happen because of the overloads when United lose the ball. Overloads also create the space because it stretches the defence wide when we're going forward. So both from an attacking perspective and the first line of defence perspective, the overload is brilliant. Now, of course, looking at this, you can see where the weaknesses are. There are huge spaces here that can be exploited and there's huge spaces here that can be exploited. But that is the reason we've signed this man. He is, he has to be the clean sweeper in the transitions. When United are getting hit on the counter, it's going to have to be Casemiro who is tasked with stopping those from happening. But I just think we're, the Everton game is the best example of it. I've seen it in other games too. But try and watch it. Try and watch it against Newcastle, right? So you'll see Manchester United, we line up in a 4-2-3-1 when the game starts. But as the game, as we settle into the game, we start building up. We'll start building up play like this. You'll see our two centre backs staying there, our full backs going forward. One of the central midfielders. It can be Casemiro. It could be Eriksen. Sometimes it might be Shaw. We'll sit back and hold back as that third player, creating the three at the back. One of the central midfielders will stay in the middle. That'll be the one, and there'll be six up front, creating the stretch on the defence. That means you can't just stay compact. You can't just sit back and do a low block because you will leave space because we've got people holding their width it's as i said it's probably quite a lot for these players to take in but they're starting to take it in that's why it's a process that's why it was when you get a new manager in who's so entrenched in his own philosophy who's done it at his previous club and has done it successfully 
and knows what he's doing, he deserves the time to do it. And right now, we've got 15 points out of 18 in the Premier League. And that the only loss is to City. And we've beaten Liverpool and Arsenal in that time. We're far from a complete side. There's still lots to work on. But I hope this video has helped you understand the 3-1-6 system. How it switches from that 4-2-3-1 when you line up to a 3-1-6 in possession. And how important those overloads are. And the fullbacks. The fullbacks are becoming really important to us. As Guardiola showed, well, Guardiola loves his fullbacks. They're very, very important to his system. They're very important to Ten Hag's system as well. Hope this has helped you understand it a little bit more. And you can see how United are progressing and where we're progressing. And where we still need to improve. There's lots more to come. I'm excited. I've been excited since day one. I'm only getting more excited. I can see us heading in the right direction. As I said, just done an 11 minute video speaking about the tactics and, and the progress. And, and I couldn't really have done that with, with the last few United teams, I don't think. There's real clarity with Ten Hag. And if I can understand it, these players can understand it. And they're starting to. As I said, that 3-1-6, three, three, it's starting to... It worked against Everton. Let's see if it works against Newcastle, Spurs and Chelsea. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you did enjoy the video, if you did learn something, make sure you drop a like on it and subscribe to United People's TV. I'll be here after the game. Take it easy, everyone.